Hi everyone. It is June 8th, 2020, and I'm going to study a Dean Cornwell picture, which I'll turn the camera around so you can see a little sketch of some people sitting around a car. It's not a complete uh, finished sketch. It is a preliminary. So this is done in charcoal. This is kind of an ambitious sketch, especially for 20 minutes or whatever. If I'm going to do that, I don't think I will just stick to 20 minutes. I think I'll do it as necessary. So I may do 40 minutes or something longer. And essentially, I'm just going for understanding what I'm looking at, how this was put together, what kinds of things he might have been thinking about. I might just do the three characters, leave out that guy, though he's pretty awesome too. Mm -hmm. It's definitely really cool, even just starting this. As I start to draw it, I start to see all kinds of, mm, what do you call it? The, uh, I start to notice how he's done things, how he's how was this image put together? What was his thought process? I see parts where he drew through the form to uh, meet the other side of the body and different things like this. And it's all super cool. Like for example, this part of the dress there's a line that shoots through into the front of the body and it's indicating that the leg on the far side is probably in a pose where the weight is on the, f the left front foot because of that way that dress is indicated. No sneeze. <laughs> so I think she's kind of holding her dress a little bit. It's kind of weird what's happening. Bunched up. Here. This was 
Dun. She has quite an elegant um, hip curve, which I didn't really pay attention to before this moment. And uh, I'm sure that's really the uh, one of the features that probably makes her look so feminine and elegant um, amidst being in these big uh, kind of bulky dress clothes that hide a lot of that to have this one curve here to really emphasize that curvature of the female form down A lot of different drapery things at the bottom. Just kind of make. This. He's he's already simplified them into very elegant rhythms. Um, line I'm gonna grow about once again I'm using a woodless um, graphite pencil either monolith or generals brand Probably my favorite sketching tool as it um, it mirrors what can be done with these Conte 1710B pencils, which are the primarily the primary tool used at Watts Atelier. These pencils can be sharpened to a similar taper to have that, as I mentioned in the last video, the um, the shading uh, broad strokes as well as very thin lines and a good range of value as well. Just do that in there. So this woman's coming along, we got things um, shaped together in a block formation, add some hair difference of where the head is compared to where the hair is, and just like that. And she's got 
or the hat on top, flowers or something. back and deal with that and make it look better later. Um, go down into the face, the center of the face. Um, yeah, so that's a female. And if I measure, I really do this in the beginning, but if I measure so from the top of the head to the arm, it's about the same as that, which is what I have. Good. Um, this guy next to her, looks like he has a small head. Um, his hat is lower than hers. Um, it's raining outside. I don't know if the microphone is picking that up. We have the hat. A little less clean than I desired. Um, Pencil is getting a little dull, so I'm gonna switch up my pencil. I'm using these half size pencils, but I have an extensor. Extend, in, extensor, um, which is a interesting Germany. Germany, that's from Germany, and it has a it's kind of brand. I don't really understand how to read it, um, but anyway. We're gonna do a center line for the face. Down there. Oops, very angular face. But it's not just one straight line, but we'll have to come back to that. Add his hand here. It does line up pretty much where I'd like it with her shoulder. And about proper size too. Oh, we'll do a nice curve for the fingers. And bring this down. Dean Cornwell seems to really have a understanding of the... Um, when you look at this sketch, you can see how he drew through the form. And he was really thinking about geometric shapes. And you can see that right away when you look at his his drawing, but even more so when you're actually drawing it. Um, and and then a lot of straight lines, a lot of that kind of style thrown in there. Um, very structural in that way. So I have the colors going on. I'm gonna draw this guy's center line, which is pretty much straight. His head looks really small. Um, that looks about right. This shoulder might come out more than I have it. Your shoulder, if I can line it up, so it kind of joins the other side a bit um, symmetrically. Um, basically, those rhythms are important. If I can line up the shoulders like that, then it connects the drawing more together. Um, sometimes I feel it's like 
And like like lining them up can be forcing them to though. There's I think there's a balance there. There's it's kind of a cryptic understanding of how am I lining something up while I'm designing while I'm choosing where it lines up, right? I'm not really it's like am I am I lining it up too purposefully in the sense that um yeah, it's hard to explain. But anyway, it's still a good uh, kind of thing to think about is lining up rhythms with each, you know, uh, side of the face or side of the body or through the forearms, wherever you can tie together the image makes it have more um, realism or just connects when you're looking at it you don't get scattered all around by different kind of disconnected points so, uh, getting into details a little bit want to avoid that drop it down by the same time some of these details can help me kind of understand placement but I gotta watch that also so I was right to extend the shoulder and I think, I mean, uh, elbow, and I think it's got to be lower than I have it. I'm tying it together with the, yeah, that's better, with the position of this um, jacket. And I want the elbow for sure to come in front of the jacket and not land not have a bad tangent where it ends exactly where the jacket line is ending. I'm going to draw through that, make sure that lines up, and I can just do something like that. Yeah, so anyway, this guy, we have that, and then he's got his leg. Comes down here. I might even, this hip, this hip, which I mentioned being so valuable, is not far enough out. And if the sleeve starts at the edge of the face, then this will go up like that. And she does. She is really skinny. I think I gotta bring out this back. I mean, bring in the back. Yeah, totally. The back should be like here. This is just part of the thing. You just gotta take a good guess and then adjust. And maybe look at it um, in a mirror, backwards or upside down. Or there's different kind of ways that you can understand the proportion and the way that your image is going or you get a you have a teacher who can point out where you're seeing it differently and then what's actually going on that looks much better this thing is too arm has to be skinny it's a skinny arm and therefore I can also that like that and as I bring this down it's gonna be out almost matching that guy's side of the head that should be good hmm and as I'm extending that it's looking better I'm thinking maybe my let's see. I think from here to there should be the bottom of the dress. Um, here 
through there. Okay, the bottom of the tree. So this whole thing, I gotta move down to make her also what you would say attractively tall and um, you know attractive. So that's where I'm at now. I'm gonna take a break, 20 minutes, and I'll continue. All right, I'm back, and we're going to continue for another 20 minutes. Um, let's see what happens. Alrighty. So, I think I'll probably just do these two figures. And in terms of the video um, and how far I get with that, that'll be enough. So this needs to be longer now. Elegant curve of the leg, which I suppose we have actually another line here indicating the leg through the dress. It's very subtle. Um, <clears throat> and then so that would go into the knee right around here, which is going down. Probably so oops me going down into dress, which kind of more of an angle. Doesn't really matter, but there we go. Um, and the angle of the dress, the angle I mentioned before, we're going to have this line coming through like this, boom, 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 and Bring that up and to a curve coming down. This is what I already drew, which I had to erase because even if it looks good, but it's in the wrong spot, you gotta redo it. No going around that. So down and this line here. Sound effects this way. And here we got a cast shadow, and it goes into, uh, it's kind of a mix, two cast shadows and a part of the curve of the dress as well. Um, bring that down, erase that line that went over, because that part of the dress is in front of the other part. And if we have lines going through each other, it ruins that illusion of that happening. So we're going to bring this up. That's decent. It's a little different, but it's decent, and I don't care. It is good enough for what it's describing. I'm not going for a perfect rendition study to like the exact of the exact with this, but rather aiming to understand what is happening, how it can look the way it does, why it looks good to me, um, what principles he's using in this particular piece or that I can dissect and even if he didn't use them, I can use what I know to get the same effect really what matters here is not necessarily knowing exactly what he was thinking but knowing how to get the same result by attempting to um, do what he did and therefore utilizing everything I know and what I'm seeing as reference to 
achieve that. And in this way, I am bringing all of this information of how he drew his decisions, his composition, arrangement of characters, um, design, design ability, and I'm bringing that all into my mind and body and everything. And with that, I shall then be able to infuse a little bit more of this, however much, I don't know, I might have to draw many, many, many Dean Cornwall studies or even the same ones to really digest and have the ability to draw this without relying on as much uh, reference or even, I mean, to have the understanding of how he drew things and therefore be able to use similar procedure um, or just to achieve similar results in my own individual original works for my stories for personal drawings anything at all that I wish to create this little part this is not actually a hand but if you were to if you were to you know trace this little area it kind of looks like that's a thumb and this could be extended and there could be a big hand here that connects to the arm which is not what's happening but uh, the ability to understand what you're seeing in abstract shapes and come up with those things is something that I feel I can do really easily and it also helps because it's identifying negative shapes um, or well, positive or negative shapes but basically the, the form of a shape but instead of just seeing it as lines or as shapes you can see it as something and in doing so you can understand how far yours is off or it, it could be an easier way to memorize um, what you're looking at and understand like oh right if I'd like to design this kind of thing like this I can remember that hand shape and utilize that um, yeah so This guy has a little kid in front of him, but I'm going to ignore the little kid and I'm going to simply give him pants that you can see because they're drawn through the kid in this drawing, but um, he didn't fully draw them out because he uh, has this other stuff going on. So. There, there, let's angle up to the Looking at the width of this pant leg compared to this part of the dress, assuming I got that right, which is close, I think it could be, it's a little different, but just the approximation that I can, that I can utilize the distance and even the distance from, this has a shadow on it add in this one also has a shadow ok 
connects down to this part. Um, approximation of shapes and stuff and so I can use even the distance from here to there this this distance and the angle um, of it and judge it with my pencil bringing it up to the image bring the pencil back down and have a good idea that I am likely in the right place Bring that down, bring this up. Talking also helps me that I'm, I'm, as I'm talking about my process, I'm, I'm realizing or I'm emphasizing the proper things to focus on. And if I'm going to tell you as a person watching this something useful it's got to be useful for me so it can't be bad advice otherwise I wouldn't say it and as I say the good advice it reminds me of what's good advice <laughs> and therefore I can implement these things while I'm drawing instead of not doing so Okay, so this hand now, uh, I mentioned it earlier, this this hand shape, it's not really a hand, is kind of confusing me. So <laughs> in terms of what I actually told you earlier, that can still work, but now this, the purpose of it is uh, kind of, it solved its purpose and needs to be transformed into something more useful like what it should be, which is a shadow. There we go, that's our shadow here. We're pretty much at the point where I can start to add some details and bring about a, a change in the uh, the way that I am putting this together in terms of bringing it more to a finish of some kind by adding details. This little shape down here, I'm not sure if you made that a foot. It kind of looks like it could be, but it also looks like it might be part of a dress or something. Or it's kind of ambiguous. He didn't finish this drawing, so it's unclear what he was trying to do, but I'm going to go with the foot placement for now because I need that and it works. So, let me bring this up. Could start at the head. Probably pretty good. I'm kind of working my way up to the head with the collar, so. That. So his face, I really, you know, I'm drawing this so small, I still have to pay attention, or I have to pay more attention to getting it accurate. Such a small head. This, the way that he drew this at uh, 19, 
0.5 by 22 inches. So my head <laughs> is quite a bit smaller than the one he did. It's about the same size as, or it's a little bigger than my the image I have in front of me if as a print. I've got this funny mustache. This guy's hair, his mouth. profile he has. It's not totally a profile, but the, um, what do you call it? The, the line of the face, the contour of this girl. It's, uh, I like it. My, this face is just too small, this pencil. Clunky. Let me just sharpen it. I know it's really too small for the camera to see, but uh, it's okay. There, that looks pretty good. His chin's a little clunky. It's too clunky. There, so we got like half a face, which is all we need for her because she's only got half a front of the face. Um, and then we have half a face for the guy, which is only half a face because we still need to draw the rest of it. It's like so much of the thought process comes in the, I mean, it's coming in now too, but just to get the thing placed in the proper place is like a lot. I think I'll spend one more um, 20 minute session on this guy. What's important here really is making sure I'm thinking about what's going on. <laughs> Sounds obvious, but I, you know, there is kind of a, I suppose a habit or a, mm, there is a, a way that I can just kind of go into drawing copy mode because that's how I 
really spent a lot of my life doing stuff and uh, it's you know it's it's essentially what we're doing when we're drawing it both ways but the uh, the latter option is we were consciously thinking while drawing and it becomes more of a puzzle understanding dissecting the process um, instead of simply going through the motions of copying it which you can get stuff out of too um, it's not totally if you don't really um, consciously think too much it's you're still improving but it's not really the same as uh, but then you don't want to think too much because then you're kind of not letting any of your natural um, intuitive abilities shine through, which would be your, for me anyway, it would be my, my kind of natural, um, you could say, talent but on also my natural flow of just drawing in uh, in a way where I'm not where I'm kind of going with with what seems natural and just not overthinking and that's important um, otherwise you know, the thing would be stiff and just not very exciting to do or to, um, or just be too, I probably wouldn't do it because it'd be too much, it'd be too intellectual or, or too mechanical. But um, there is intellect involved for sure the balance. So anyway, I hear the garbage truck coming by outside and my timer's past 20 minutes. And I've spent, you know, five minutes working on this little head. I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see it. Um, I'm going to take a break. Here. So, take a break and I'm back which of course for you watching the video it's not gonna look like I actually went anywhere but I took a five-minute break and I'm back to do some more drawing of Dean Cornwell's study so he's got some there cross hatching lines we got this down here this is the first drawing of the day and so now that I've drawn for 40 minutes I feel a little more tuned up with my pencil and my ability to do what I desire to do with my hand Just like that, just like that. This folds into there, and this one is a fold around that fold. So as I'm drawing this, I'm not just copying the lines, but I'm observing the anatomy of these particular things. And put that there, and a little line like that, and maybe something like that. Yeah. All right, so this is all shadow. So for this shadowy area, there's some linear lines in there, but I'm just gonna go with 
same angle, but mostly just blocking it in in shadow without adding those additional lines because I don't think they add a whole lot for my understanding of things it's at this point. I could add them later if I feel like it. Um, this is a shadow area. There's a lot of little lines of the hair and stuff. And of course, this also has its anatomy, so I can't just go bonkers on it without having my proper, what do you call it, proper thought in there about why I'm doing what I'm doing. And we're going to have lines up there, lines up here. Nice looking hair. Right up here. More shading and more shading. This line. It's kind of clunky the way I did it. Clunky is the word of the day, apparently. This and that. There. And I'm gonna have one solid shading line through those. And one there. And we got the neck. And the neck is fairly thin. Probably good. Do that. I'm gonna bump this line up. Add such a subtle shadow through the head chin area. And knock it back with an eraser a little bit. And a little bit of a line through the chin. This is a cast shadow for the ear. And you do the ear really simply with two two lines. It's like a lightning bolt. Um, and there. And his neck, he. He's created it into a cube with a back plane being very obvious and a front plane. We have a shadow for the neck, which I'm going to put the neckline in front of the shoulder. That's what I see. There. And we're going to have the dress back. Good. Like I suddenly have a bunch of thoughts going through my head about things that are not present and are distracting me. Or rather, I'm letting them distract me. So I'm going to refocus. Noticing the difference in the hat. It's not really, not really a big deal, but round it up a bit. Um, yeah, so I am smearing this other guy a little bit with my hand, which is I started in a good place by shading up here because I'm right-handed and I won't be smearing up there when it's finished um, now that it's 
pretty much finished so we have the shoulder blades it's not really visible but there is a little bit of an indication of the back muscles um, and down into the center of the back is this core shadow it's funny all these terms core shadow and there's all these things I'm thinking about I didn't I had no idea of like three years ago four years ago He has a bunch of linear lines creating this, this shading on this back, but with some smudging too, it looks like. So I do have a sneeze, a sneeze coming, baby. I do have one of these things, which I might be able to utilize to get some of this smudginess he's got and even to soften up some of my shading that I have going on up there and just to kind of blend things in some She looks really muscular, and it, I look kind of like how you can see her her form really clearly in this dress. You know, it's very clear that all the everything's wrapping around her body instead of just kind of being un, undescribed and unclear about like what where her body is as you might see in some other art. This one is like really emphasizing that there's a three-dimensional character and who's quite, you could say, well, she's, I don't know, attractive, bulky. Um, there's a sense of, of thickness but it's elegant too and it's it's um i mean i just see so many different kinds of drawings of like females these days that are much less attractive in a in a very enriching sense than this drawing because of the fact that they'll their form is just less Mm. It doesn't look like it's as, um, it's, it's kind of like trying to be sexy or something, where this just is like many other things, and sexiness could be part of it. So it it's more than that, and therefore 
the fact that it's sexy there's the fact that it's more makes it sexier because it's not all about that and it makes it more real and more just rich so those are my thoughts on this particular female figure she's got these the curves like of the fabric around this is really good too and I'm gonna put that I think it's looking pretty good for that kind of body certainly uh slow um, take a while there I don't know how I can I'm still working on getting the camera closer so like this is more captured because in a way um, in a way if I if I am to zoom in with the camera it's gonna get blurry and it's just really not gonna be that clear either but you know maybe I'll try it a little bit let's try it out that's the wrong one As you can see, I'm new to this, um, but you know, maybe that's a little better. Anyway, um, we'll figure this out over time. I'm just finding, you know, this this setup I have right now is just makes it very simple for me to do this and upload it instead of having to edit anything, and that's what I like. And I'm gonna focus on that. More so than clarity of drawing, even though obviously that's important for a video. But what might be more um, interesting to people is my banter. If if you're gonna actually listen to this hour video, so and maybe you know doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm just doing my thing and the people who feel like coming along for the thing will come along and people who don't will not so and I think uh, part of this is I'm using graphite and I'm using pencil and this thing is quite um, small and different things like this so I was thinking one way that would make it clearer is if I was going to do a bigger piece, do some painting or something, like gouache painting, then you'd actually be able to see the lines and wouldn't be so far away or, or you'd see the splotches of paint, rather. Uh, bring the shoulder down. So I am not going to finish this in... Um, the next 10 minutes but uh, that's all I'm gonna do for this video maybe well I, I, I could show this finished as I work on it more or I could do another video where I work on it more but um, I will show it finished at some point to one of my videos in the future Not really sure what's going on with his shoulder. <laughs> He's got a lot of bizarre wrinkles and stuff. Mm. Kind of looks cool, I guess. It's also kind of bizarre. Kind of see how it can 
be like that in terms of what the other shoulder looks like, but it's also a little chaotic. <clears throat> With his particular head, the one thing that's maybe I'll focus on just getting in this last little bit of time here is this um, particular angle and curve of the face, whatever it is, as it moves. Um, and also maybe the other eye, bring this eye back because it kind of got faded when I rubbed over it. And the other bone. You see what I did there? If you could see that, as I wrapped my lines eye to eye so that I could have a symmetrical um, connection or just kind of a symmetry of of uh, bringing that together, this nose line is not in the right place. I'm going to bring it more towards the other eye so I can have a little bit of a gap. That's probably enough, even if it's so so. Uh, between the two eyebrows and down and and he looks a bit odd. I think his cheekbone is still. The eye's not done. I'm gonna have to just go with what, what I've been getting here. Is his face is just too small to match what I'm seeing in terms of line work. It's just my pencil thickness is. But it's better than nothing. Some shadow of the head and the hat. Looks kind of funny without a hat. But a um, few minutes left here. Sharpen my pencil again. Just a little bit. Working on the face. This nose line is thicker because it's like a shadow. And his face. Oops. <laughs> So it's been an hour, it's been 20 minutes again, so it's going to add some kind of few things here. Except the ear just a little bit. All right. Well, that's all I'm going to do for this hour. Take a look a little closer. And you can see it's a little bit different than the reference and stuff, but it um, you know 
that's what I got so far. So there's a lot of work to be done on this particular sketch. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in and see you next time.